Hello, and welcome to a special Q&A recording of Wildfire, one of the 50 official selection titles at the 45th Toronto International Film Festival. As part of Share Her Journey, Tiff's commitment to supporting women behind and in front of the camera, we're thrilled to spotlight the incredible films by women at this year's festival, including Wildfire. My name is Kiva Reardon, and I'm the lead programmer of Contemporary World Cinema, and I'm thrilled to be here with director Kathy Brady, star Nora Jane Noon, and producer Carlo Prestovina. Uh, Kathy was born in Newry County Down, Northern Ireland, and she won an Irish Film and Television Academy uh, Film and Drama Award for her debut short film, Small Change, and again for Morning, which was a follow-up two years later. Her other works include Rough Skin, created for Channel 4 anthology series Coming Up, the short Wasted, and an episode of the British TV series Glue. She directed the first season of RT2's television series Can't Cope, Won't Cope, and Wildfire is her debut feature film. Uh, Nora Jane can be seen in uh, The Magdalene Sisters, which I believe was your debut, uh, and also Descent and Brooklyn. And uh, I want to thank you, our audiences, for joining us here today. As an organization still impacted by COVID, we need the support of our audiences so that we can continue to present films to future generations and preserve these diverse and important voices. Of course, this film is eligible for the People's Choice Award, and you can vote for your favorite film at tiff.net slash vote. Thank you all so much for being here, um, for taking the time to, uh, to do this Q&A in this new landscape. Um, I do want to just start by expressing how sorry I am for the passing of Amiga Wigan. Um, I know it's been very hard for the entire team, um, and I just wanted to acknowledge that off the top. Because, um, yeah, it's been a long journey for you, for you all. Thank you. Um, Kathy, I know I just alluded it to a bit, but it's been a long journey for the film. Um, I believe about eight years, was that? If I might, it's probably closer to six. Am I am I right, guys? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, well, I kind of I guess how the the film was approached is kind of unusual, in the sense that I cast before I had an idea. So, um, having worked with uh, Nika and Norjin separately, I was just fascinated by their energy, and um, it, I had such a privilege of just seeing them meet for the first time. And that was kind of when I knew I just had something really remarkable. So um, I decided to write something for them. And um, we were chatting back and forth for, oh my God, maybe about a couple of months. And we were gathering images and even music. And uh, we were referencing kind of things that we were all interested, a common interest. And we, we, we came across the, the documentary Madness in the Fasting, which I'd remember seeing about 10 years prior. And I was talking to the girls about this one scene that happened within it. Um, and it was these identical twin sisters who were found walking along the middle of the M6, threw themselves onto oncoming traffic and survived with remarkable fury and life. They survived. And um, that really was a, a point of huge interest. And it was in around that time, Carlo just DM'd me on Twitter and uh, he had seen Morning and and uh, he thought we should meet. And I thought, wow, okay, well, listen, I'm just gonna try it. And I, I had gathered the, the 50 images, the piece of music, girls' headshots, the clip from the documentary. And I went to Carla's office and I kind of just like put it all out there. And I was like, this is kinda the film I wanna make. And Carlo, to his credit was like, okay, this is gonna be a very difficult film to make. Well, this sounds really difficult, but really fascinating. And uh, and really, so began that six six year journey, and other producers come on board, uh, Charles Steele, and then later David Collins. Um, so I actually, right from the get go, I I had uh, I was very confident in the sense that I wanted to research it, research it because it, you know the story was dealing with shared psychosis, something I knew nothing about, and for me it was very important to kind of to really uh, grind that story in a truth and a reality. So that meant. Myself and Norji and Nika were meeting people who had um, maybe family members who had um, experienced psychotic breaks and we were meeting social workers and psychiatrists. And alongside that, we were doing physicality workshops to start to build up their, their character and the sense of the world. And for me, it made sense to write where I came from, which was borderland Northern Ireland. So it was really a case of um, pulling together what might happen characters who live in this environment, whose maybe uh, parents and grandparents had experienced the troubles. So 
So that's really kind of we were we're starting to work backwards in a way because with with psychosis, um, the past becomes present. So for us, we realize we really need to understand, we really need to root what the past of these character is before we can even deal with our present. So it became a really interesting development process of um, fact informing fiction, fiction informing what fact we needed to go and research. So uh, we, we gathered material probably through close for a year, if I'm right, in origin. Um, yeah, we had the uh, Facebook, a private Facebook page that we would just like, anytime we came across something interesting that seemed like it connected or, Give a give a real feeling of the sisters or the the journey. We would just pop it all up there, and like you yeah. said, looking all sorts of things. That's so. I think how how visually based. Oh no, sorry, sorry. So once once we had kind of enough material, uh, we were we were really lucky that our that our funders came on board, and and especially Screen Ireland, who were first in the door and welcomed trust to really embrace the research process. So we were able to gather kind of what we had done in uh, physicality workshops because for me it was really important these two sisters were symbiotic, they knew each other inside out, they were so codependent. Once we had gathered enough of that, then we went and did a residential workshop in, in Ireland in the wilds of Kerry. And that became a, a week-long process of really starting to fine, fine-tune what the backstory was, what our present was, and then... Um, I would have went off and did a long, uh, a long, long form treatment, about thirty pages, and then working with the producers, we kind of and and also the cast kind of fine tuning that before I went to a script stage, and then that script, you know, those scripts kind of went at various different stages over the years, and more funders come on board, um, so I think hopefully for it, the film has uh, has got a very authentic, nuanced feel, and I think, you know, our central performances from the girls are absolutely breathtaking. I hope. I can agree with that. Yeah, absolutely. That was when we were watching it, you know, collaboratively as as a programming committee, we just kept coming back to these incredible performances. And and on that note, Nora Jane, I, I wanted to ask what it was like to finally embody and step into that character, having gone on this, you know, six year journey of, of, of building her. Oh, yeah, I mean, I think, it was so exciting and, and also, you know, a lot of pressure and there was so much build up, I think, for all of us um, that it was, you know, you're just kind of holding on to this energy and then you finally get to kind of let loose and go with it. And it was really, I have to say, once kind of the beginning was over and we were off and running, it was like, ah, oh, here we go, you know. Um, it really was just just breaking breaking the seal and we were off and, and it was... Um, you know, like Kathy said, there was just so many stages that we went through that, you know, the memories of the workshops of the moments where we found all these these feelings together or parts of scenes and the dance scene and, and just so much, you know, was embedded in us for so long that you almost forgot that there was so many things that we'd already lived through. So it was really amazing to kind of come back to it and be like, oh, wow, we're here we're here, this is now, this is now for real, you know, um, and really beautiful to feel like we've done that together, you know. And can I just throw in there that what's remarkable about these two actors was workshops is entirely different to research, uh, to uh, rehearsals. And um, because workshops, you have to completely commit. You have to completely commit to a choice, to an energy, because if, if you don't come into that workshop with that level of intensity, that level of energy, Everything that you you pull from that workshop is not actually is sitting in the truth. Um, so in a sense, when you're when we were later on and we were close to production, we were doing rehearsals. So, you know, we didn't have to hit the highs because you know, in fact, we wanted to keep that back. But with workshops, it's entirely different. So uh, it was incredible. The very first workshop we did with Norji and, and Nico was I we didn't have a script, I, images and music. So I realized we needed to hit really high energy if you were going to play characters who were, you know, in the midst of a psychosis. So we, we played Patty Smith's um, horses. Yeah. And, and I think it was a very simple note to them, like, you need to match each other's energy. And Nika, God love her, had the most incredible wild energy. She came from a really very physical place. And, um, you know, it was incredible just how free she was and, and how that unlocked all of us in a way. And, and when Norgian met her, there was something incredible uh, about 
what they opened in each other. And it was what's fascinating is that moment somehow ended up in the film and our dancing. Like pretty much what the girls did on that very first day of workshop, I went back to those tapes and worked with choreographers pretty much to mirror and copy exactly what they did. So isn't that fascinating that on our first workshop, like five years ago, we already had a scene within the film without knowing it. And how did you end up deciding on, um, I believe it's Gloria in the dance scene in, in this. Oh, in wow. This, in, yeah, how, yeah, yeah, how did that come about? <laughs> It was, it was actually quite beautiful. In a sense, uh, we had a completely different song. I think it was Let's Dance by Chris Chris Isaac, was it? Originally, that was meant to be it. And we were, um, it wasn't kind of quite fitting. And it was close to our uh, rehearsals. I think we were maybe a week off from shooting. And um, we, I, I was trying to flesh out the backstory because the first time secondary actors were coming in and, you know, these two actresses had amazing connection. And I was like, okay, we need to flesh out backstory. So, Marty McCann, who was going to play Lauren's husband, um, came in. We were doing a workshop. And so I was just like, right, OK, we're going to just do some backstory ideas. So I played the night of their wedding and uh, on the dance floor in like some kind of Irish kind of hotel bar kind of thing. So I was just playing, you know, their first dance, which Marty said was dropped to Jupiter by uh, by Trian. And then, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was really cool because like, it was incredible. The music just played and you could just see this connection. And Nika sort of sat in the corner and she felt like Kelly, who felt outside the situation. But I was like, okay, Marty, give me a track that brings them all together. And he's like, got to be Van the Man. It's got to be Gloria. And he played it. And it's just like, boom. The energy was like, holy shit, that's incredible, that song. And I think we were all like, we have to get that song. We have to get that song. So uh, we were very lucky that we had a connection that could um, bring us close to Van Morrison. But then it was a case of writing a letter and pleading, please, this this song is is crucial. It's it's got the energy of the film. And, uh, and fair play to him, he uh, he offered us the song like for a really nominal fee. Oh wow! Oh, that's I've. I'm a big fan of anyway, so now I now he can even add that on to the oh he's, now he's really really great. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, I remember I, I remember someone said to me like um very very early days in prep he goes to me you know the rule you know don't work with children don't work with animals and don't work with Van Morrison. I said, ah! And I was like oh my god I'm working with all of them but like I have to say Van Morrison was incredible absolutely incredible. Well, we're saying it is the film is so much about their relationship and and the two sisters. Um, but I also was so touched by the way that the film dealt so openly with mental illness, which I know is still a taboo everywhere. But especially in in Northern Ireland, in a you know a society that's post conflict, and um, even just last year, the passing of uh, Laura McKee, the young journalist who'd been really advocating for this generation that's been struggling. Um, mm -hmm. I. How I, you know, we talked about this long development, but how, I suppose, how important was that for you to put on screen and, and bring into a bigger conversation and really make mental illness um, visible? Do you know what was, it was really important for us that the, that the characters felt complex and that there were not diagnoses of um, someone suffering from mental illness. So that was first and foremost, like it was, how do we, how do we, how do we really complete really rich characters who happen to um, be vulnerable rather than come on the other way about? So that was that was first and present. And I guess really, like, like I mean, it was a case of, um, you know, speaking to people who had experienced it and, you know, and, and talking in, in our own circles about what that does to a family dynamic and what does that, what does that feel like in a wider community. And I suppose in terms of a, a political setting, you know, Liz, like, like Lara McKee was one of, uh, you know, she had an amazing essay on the idea of um, uh, transgenerational trauma, the idea of trauma that can't be, that is so overwhelming that it, it can't be understood by that generation. So it's passed on to the earlier generation and, and they carry this, this trauma with them that they maybe quite can't understand. And what Lara McKee in her work, she was talking about the ceasefire babies. And that is the, uh, uh, my generation and the generation uh, before me who, who haven't experienced the troubles firsthand. But there is incredibly, in fact, soaring suicide rates, uh, as well as Northern Ireland has one of the highest um, uses of uh, antidepressants in the world. So, you know, there was, there was something about those things that, um, 
that felt relevant to our story. And I think that, no, Regina, I think it was a case of us, you know, over those years, just kind of hitting stuff that hit a nerve and, and somehow wanting to unfold it into the story. Yeah, I mean, like that, There's there was so many parallels to, to the overall story, to, you know, to just generally um, everyday people who can kind of relate to things on, on different ends of the spectrum. Um, you know, I had someone very close to me who dealt with mental health issues. Um, and so to me, it was very much that, like Kathy said, it was very important to make sure that these were people first and foremost, and not an illness that you're showing on screen. You know, it's a person who is dealing with something, who is, you know, um, kind of lost, like you said, in terms of revisiting a trauma. Um, and we looked at a lot of um, articles on transformative crisis. That was like a really beautiful concept that you have to relive something viscerally in order to truly let go of it and to truly deal with it. And that was like, I felt like that was um, a really beautiful metaphor for the movie and something that for me, and I, I don't know if you agree, Kathy, but um, for me is what I was kind of, you hope the audience goes through too. You hope that they feel it viscerally and that in the end it's a catharsis and they in themselves, whatever it is within their own lives and their own self um, that relates to this film gets to let go, you know, by the end. Absolutely. So I'm, I'm getting our digital signal that we do have to wrap up the conversation here. Um, but I want to thank you again so much, Kathy, Carlo and Norjean for joining us. Um, Congratulations on the film, and and yes, thank you so much for sharing it with our audience. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us.